In mathematics Habush's theorem, often still referred to as the Mumford conjecture, states that for any semisimple algebraic group G over a field K, and for any linear representation ρ of G on a K-vector space V, given V does not equal zero in V that is fixed by the action of G, there is a G-invariant polynomial F on V, without constant term, such that F v does not equal zero, the polynomial can be taken to be homogeneous, in other words an element of a symmetric power of the dual of v, and if the characteristic is p greater than zero the degree of the polynomial can be taken to be a power of p. When k has characteristic zero this was well known, in fact Weyl's theorem on the complete reducibility of the representations of G implies that f can even be taken to be linear. Mumford's conjecture about the extension to prime characteristic p was proved by W. J. Habush about a decade after the problem had been posed by David Mumford, in the introduction to the first edition of his book Geometric Invariant Theory. Applications. <laughs> <laughs> Habush's theorem can be used to generalize results of geometric invariant theory from characteristic zero, where they were already known, to characteristic p greater than zero. In particular Nagata's earlier results together with Habush's theorem show that if a reductive group over an algebraically closed field acts on a finitely generated algebra then the fixed subalgebra is also finitely generated. Habush's theorem implies that if G is a reductive algebraic group acting regularly on an affine algebraic variety, then disjoint closed invariant sets X and Y can be separated by an invariant function f. This means that f is 0 on X and 1 on Y. C. S. Seshadri extended Habush's theorem to reductive groups over schemes. It follows from the work of Nagata 1963, Habush, and Popoff that the following conditions are equivalent for an affine algebraic group G over a field K G is reductive its unipotent radical is trivial for any non-zero invariant vector in a rational representation of G, there is an invariant homogeneous polynomial that does not vanish on it for any finitely generated K algebra on which G act rationally, the algebra of fixed elements is finitely generated. Topic: <laughs> Proof. The theorem is proved in several steps as follows. We can assume that the group is defined over an algebraically closed field K of characteristic P greater than zero. Finite groups are easy to deal with as one can just take a product over all elements, so one can reduce to the case of connected reductive groups as the connected component has finite index. By taking a central extension which is harmless one can also assume the group G is simply connected. Let A G be the coordinate ring of G this is a representation of G with G acting by left translations. Pick an element V of the dual of V that has value 1 on the invariant vector V. The map V to A G by sending W element of V to the element or element of A G with A G equals V G W. This sends V to one element of A G, so we can assume that V A G and V equals one. The structure of the representation A G is given as follows. Pick a maximal torus T of G, and let it act on A G by right translations so that it commutes with the action of G. Then A G splits as a sum over characters λ of T of the subrepresentations A G λ of elements transforming according to λ. 
so we can assume that V is contained in the T invariant subspace A G lambda of A G. The representation A G lambda is an increasing union of subrepresentations of the form E lambda plus n rho n rho, where rho is the W E Y L vector for a choice of simple roots of T, n is a positive integer, and E mu is the space of sections of the line bundle over G, B corresponding to a character mu of T, where B is a Borel subgroup containing T. If n is sufficiently large then n rho has dimension n plus 1 n where n is the number of positive roots. This is because in characteristic 0 the corresponding module has this dimension by the Weyl character formula, and for n large enough that the line bundle over G, B is very ample, n rho has the same dimension as in characteristic 0. If q equals pr for a positive integer r, and n equals q minus 1, then n rho contains the Steinberg representation of g fq of dimension qn, here fqk is the finite field of order q, the Steinberg representation is an irreducible representation of g fq and therefore of g k, and for r large enough it has the same dimension as n rho, so there are infinitely many values of n such that n rho is irreducible. If n rho is irreducible it is isomorphic to its dual, so n rho n rho is isomorphic to n n rho. Therefore, the T invariant subspace A G lambda of A G is an increasing union of subrepresentations of the form n e for representations e of the form e q minus one rho. However, for representations of the form end e, an invariant polynomial that separates 0 and 1 is given by the determinant. This completes the sketch of the proof of Habusha's theorem. <laughs> 